Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is the day that I'm gonna to get to build a computer because as you guys, many of you know, I was soliciting donations because I have been funding this project by myself for a long time. And I did get some people that uh, gave donations. I'm gonna do a whole video uh, thanking those guys. Um, but meanwhile, I was able to acquire fundage other ways and in doing so, I was able to finally fund my streaming PC, which is why I have all this gear. And guys, we are gonna go ahead and just start putting this guy together and getting it done. All right, so my case isn't here yet, but that's okay because there's a lot of components to this that need some love today before I get my case. So let's go over some of the parts that I have right here. Uh, so I've got the B550, this is the Gigabyte Ultra Durable, and I, I hope so because the PC that I'm going to be building is going to be portable. And it's portable for a reason because when I do streaming, when I'm on the road, when I do 3D scanning, more on that later, I need some horsepower in order to make it happen. So that's why I've elected some of these components. Part of it is based on the cost, of course, because I do have a budget. But also, part of my requirements is that it's got to be pretty powerful. And right now, there is no better bang for the buck than to go with a AM4 AMD system. I love AMD. I've been using them for years. And the heart of this operation is this guy right here. I've got a Ryzen 7 5700G. This guy right here has got plenty of power. It does have... Uh, integrated graphics, but I'm not going to use the integrated graphics because I also have AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT. Um, I'll get to that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and let's open up the motherboard and let you guys take a look. The cool thing right now is that there is the AM5 motherboards out there. So the AM4, they're, they're actually pretty reasonable in cost right now and I, I really dig it. This board made a lot of sense for me. They call it the ultra durable. Don't really know how well that's going to work out. It does have a uh, nice heat sink system here and it's got a reasonable amount of power phases. A lot of my other computers are pretty beasty when it comes to the components and the reinforcement of a lot of these. Uh, they usually have heat sinks over the NVMEs. But you know, the other part of this build is that it has to be portable. So I'm not gonna build the heaviest computer in the world. Now, this motherboard right here uh, has integrated Wi-Fi. It's got plenty of I.O. Unexpectedly, it's also got a PS2 connector. How cool is that? Um, it's, it's got the, the nice solid state style caps. Everything about it is pretty nice. I actually have uh, four sticks of memory. What kind of surprised me on that one. I was expecting uh, compatibility for only two sticks, but that's okay guys, because I also have two terabyte 980 Pro drive and I've got a 32 gig kit uh, to which I might actually expand that to 64 bit because doing things like uh, st video streaming and doing 3D scanning eats the memory. It just eats it. So let's see, where should we start? How about we go ahead and just start with the CPU. The reason that I like to get the CPU out of the way is because this bad boy here is a pin grid array. And so uh, it has a lot of little tiny pins that can get damaged. So one of the first things I like to do is get that CPU, get it placed, and I know it's safe for the rest of the build, thank goodness. So here it is, it's got a huge amount of, of pins on it. Uh, one of the coolest things about the AM4s is that, uh, you know, Ryzen made it so that you can use the same socket with just BIOS upgrades for even their latest chips until, you know, the, the latest version of Ryzen processors, which requires the AM5 and DDR5. Now that's the other reason why I stuck with this one here is because the DDR4 it's actually rather inexpensive. 32 gig kit um, was like, what, 70 bucks? What a win. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this guy placed. There it is, we're set. All 
right that one kind of snapped in a little bit and it is not supposed to this is a zip socket but it did so I pulled it back out just to check it one more time and this the sockets a little weird because usually on a zip socket there is no insertion force but this one here that it clearly had uh, some tension it really did so there we go CPUs in all right so this CPU here also came with the Wraith cooler and this is the Wraith Stealth and I elected not to use this one um, and let's take a look and see why I just to be safe I went ahead and got the Noctua cooler which does actually get better temps according to all the benchmarks I've seen but it's also a lower profile so oh cool Okay, so presentation's everything. You see that, guys? Let's take a look at that. So, you got thermal compound, man. It all comes in a nice card. Here's your hold down fasteners. It's beautiful. Oh, it's so pretty. Come on, give it up. So, here is why I am going with the Noctua it's all about height. So you can see I'm saving three quarters of an inch there to right, right about there. Yeah, probably half an inch. So a half an inch plus take a look at the, the cooler. So this here is probably a nickel plated copper. And this one here is just straight extruded aluminum. So aluminum, while it is a fantastic cooler, it is not nearly as good as copper. And you can just tell the weight difference. The Noctua is definitely heavier. It comes with AM4 bracket. So all I gotta do is take these guys off here, slap this guy on, and we are off to the races. Hell yeah. It comes with its own thermal paste. Very cool, excited about that. It's got a badge, all right, cool. We got a badge. And I have a low noise adapter. Hmm, curious what that guy's for. Okay, and my fasteners. There you go, beautiful fasteners. So, well worth the price, Noctua. Um, glad about that. So this cooler here, I might use this on another another device in the future. We'll see. So I'm gonna put that back in the box. Although, if I would have uh, thought that I was gonna get a cooler anyway, I wouldn't have went with this processor. But that's okay. We're all right. Go ahead and set this off to the side. This guy's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So the way that this is going to work is I have to flip this guy upside down. Yeah, hmm, lovely. So that there's gonna be a plate, this guy right here. Okay, so this guy is gonna be on the back side, and the fasteners are gonna go through it and they're going to screw into the cooler. All right, so let me go and get a glove because I put on thermal compound differently than almost everybody I know. And I don't understand why they all do the little blotch, the X, all, all that weird garbage. Never understood it because all you have to do is put a dot down and then use your finger in a rubber glove and smoothen it out. And you can come really close to coming a uh, uniform plane of the, uh, the compound. You'll see, I'll show you. So let's pull this guy all out. Right, excellent. And here you can see the plate will just fall off. And that is what puts equal pressure around your processor. So for this one, um, hmm. All right, so this guy is definitely gonna be on the back side. I've got my four Noctua fasteners. Where'd they go? All right, let's see, what are these? I've got some more fasteners here. Okay, uh, those are probably maybe for a taller fan. I think because this here is a shallow fan for depth, but you can get a taller fan, and that's probably what those ones are for. That's all good. I'm gonna use that fan. It's gonna work fantastic. 
Okay, so here's my uh, my fasteners for this bad boy. Oh, no. That's not good. Okay. So I'm going to set these guys out so I have good access to them. All right. So there we go. Nothing of any use on that. And let's see. Let's move this guy over a little bit better. And thermal compound. So let's go ahead and put this guy on. So what I do is I put thermal compound in the center. Like so. And that's why I'm wearing the glove. And it's just crazy because when people take their heat sinks off, you see like even when you do the X pattern and all that, it doesn't smear out. The viscosity is too high. So by doing it this way with a rubber glove, I can feel all the ripple, ripples and valleys and I can smoothen it out just like that. I'm done. How crazy is that? And everybody has like all this process of putting a P, putting an X, putting a plus. Stupid. Just put some on your finger. There you go. You're off to the races. All right, so the important part on this is to make sure that the CPU fan is oriented in the correct direction. So that would be uh, this direction right here. Right here is the header. So that means it's got to be straight up and down. Like so. Okay, clear as day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the support bracket in the back and I'm gonna put a fastener in it and then it will go through the hole like so. And then I'm gonna take my plate, line it up and just use it to hold it like so. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do the same to the bottom corner. There we are. And there's going to be some spring pressure on these, so do not screw them all the way down. Which I kind of screwed it in a little too far. All right, here we go. I like to see what I'm doing here. Okay. You know one of the other cool things about these Noctua screws? They're knurled on the edge. See that? How cool is that? So they're kind of like thumb screws. It works so well. All right, so here I am just tightening them down a little bit. Put the other two corners in. Now remember, don't ever tighten down all the fasteners until you get them all in because it's a law that the last one is not going to line up. There we go. Okay, so we are looking good. good looking good so now I can start tightening it down in a cross pattern and you tighten them all the way on these ones because with these ones it's a preset amount of load of preload which means the screws are very particular length everything is very specialized and here we go let's put this guy in CPU header, we're good. I'm just checking to make sure that everything lines up. We got good clearance under the bottom of the heat sink. I got a correct amount of squish coming out on the very, very edge of the processor. We're good. We are good. All right, so let's see what we got here. Got memory. So I will probably have a second memory kit for this, so it doesn't really matter where I place it. So I'll probably load this up with 64 gigs. More than likely. Let's go ahead and open them up. So 
So a lot of these DDR4s, they will rock in on one side and then the other. Uh, this is one of the older style that it latches in on both sides. Like all the performance boards I've done lately, they, they kind of rock in on one and it latches on the other corner. This one here, it's fair game. All right, cool. This is moving right along. I dig it. All right, so here's what we got going on with this next one. I've got my 980 Pro. It's a two terabyte drive and uh, NVMe. This has uh, capacity for two NVMe's, but there is no native heat sink on this motherboard. So what we are gonna do is we are going to install our own heat sink, all right? A lot of motherboards come with some sort of built-in heat sink. This one does not, all right? So here we go. Let's see, does uh, Samsung actually include fasteners? Nah, why would they? All right. See, I don't know if uh, this motherboard came with fasteners. Should be interesting. Oh, no, they're already installed. Stupid. I should have recognized that. Okay, so one of the things I got off of Amazon is they have heat sinks for NVMEs. This is a beastie heat sink. Um, but that's okay because it's going to be in a tight area. Ah, what a cool little kit. Love it. some of the stuff that you find on Amazon. So you can tell the NVMe, a two terabyte drive, it is not big at all. And that means that also, it doesn't have very much space to get rid of heat. So there's not very much thermal mass there. And while some manufacturers say, yeah, just go ahead and install it without, I always put um, a heat sink on. All right, so let's see. This is an interesting one. So it's a double-sided uh, heat sink setup. So you're going to place the heat sink on the top and on the bottom. Yep. So it's going to go on a thermal pad, kind of like that. And it will get placed where it goes. So neither one of these thermal pads is pre-installed. Okay, and there are fasteners down the sides. And it comes with a, a little screwdriver. How cute is that? <laughs> but anyway, um, there is a notch, and the notch is going to be for the back side, right? So I just have to be aware of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install my thermal pad for the bottom. All right. Let's hope I don't mess this up. All right. Come on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it right at the edge, let it fall. There we go. Come on. Pulling the, the protective layers off of these things is always such a pain. It's always a pain. Okay. It's not really that specific. Uh, you just kind of slap it on there. Uh, just make sure that you have enough of a header to plug it in and make sure that you have an exposed piece. On the Samsung, you can see that it's got a nice, brightly colored coppers, and that's for the ground on the back. Oh, look at this. So it came with three sets. Wow, that's so weird. It came with three sets of thermal pads, and they're all the same thickness. And I guess you could um, stack them up. I guess. No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm trying not to touch the uh, the surfaces. And this this thermal pad that comes with this kit is really sticky, really sticky, guys. All right, here we go. All right, we're all set. And now this guy. We'll just go on there like so. Too easy, too easy. So this is adjustable. There are slots in there so you can tighten it down um, to add more pressure on those thermal pads. Kind of cool. Meant for all sorts of different types of NVMe drives. Okay, so I've got my fasteners threaded all the way around. Now I'm just going to give it a slight squeeze. I 
Jeez, it's not a good screwdriver at all. Okay. All right, you can hear that screwdriver camming out. All right, and there we go. That is a heat sink, double heat sink, uh, NVMe drive. Pretty cool. Nice. I like it. Definitely better than uh, just keeping a, a NVMe drive in by itself. And of course, I'm going to place it in the, the slot closest uh, to keep it away from my uh, video card, which is going to generate some heat. And there is a stud preset at the correct distance. I dig it. There we are. There we go. Okay, NVMe seated. We are good. Let's clean up some of my trash. I'm going to have a stack of trash by the time I'm done with this. All right, so let's see. Everything is looking fantastical. Um, my case is going to be in tomorrow. And I will proceed with the rest of this install tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and put it in. Well, hopefully it's in tomorrow. Jeez, I really hope so. Let's go ahead and take a look at this video card. I haven't pulled it out yet to see what it looks like. Okay. So the Sapphire cards were a little bit more expensive than some of the other um, competitors, but they're also a little bit smaller. looks pretty good to me um yeah definitely a smaller form factor some of those cards are really long but this one here had a dual fan setup yeah, let's go ahead and pull this off there we go how beautiful is that so this card's going to have a slight riser cable that's going to allow it to fit in a separate chamber in the case it's going to be fantastic guys i love it all right, guys, so that's day one of the PC build. Tomorrow, we're hopefully going to get the case in, and I will continue the video series where we build it out, do some cable management, and um, finish setting it up and get it set up for streaming because that's what it's going to do. It's going to be a powerhouse for, for what I need. Anyway, guys, hope you like this video. Just a real quick uh, install of some of my components. Stay tuned. We're going to have more. Thanks for watching, guys.